Hi, this is Felipe Osario, and welcome to Second Earth Alternative. All right, so I can't believe how much is happening in the news right now. I don't know if I really want to talk about too much about the news. Today is more about artificial intelligence. But if you guys look at the newspapers, uh, you guys check out the news stations, you will see a lot of geopolitical issues, uh, specifically with the warring between the right and the left. And um, look, this channel used to be political. I'm not going to get political right now, but I do want to say that I get a sense that the two polar opposites are actually being played against each other. So uh, just wanted to put that out there. And something else that I want to talk about is our alien abduction episode that we just came out with recently. That episode was demonetized by YouTube. And this was a little bit worrying for me, uh, except that we actually ended up uh, asking for it to be reviewed uh, manually. And then within two days, they actually ended up monetizing the video. So given the recent news with Alex Jones, given all the free speech that has been hindered recently, I do consider this a small victory for this channel. So today I want to talk about artificial intelligence. Specifically, I want to talk about what is going to happen in the near future regarding these robots that we've been building, you know, not just from the episode, uh, not just from the company Hanson Robotics that we talked in a previous episode that it's making that social robot, but there are also robots that are being produced by DARPA, the robots in which Putin has been working on for his regime. So artificial intelligence is basically like the new weapon. It's like a new nuclear weapon for World War III. I mean, forget the nukes. If you got the best, you know, artificial intelligence, that's going to be your savior for the war. God, God forbid if there is one. But the, but that's why this topic is so important. And in my previous episode, I was talking about Hanson Robotics, Sophia, and trying to make the point that I think Sophia is actually getting close to a form of consciousness, though maybe not like tomorrow type consciousness, but she has basic rudimentary forms of understanding that go beyond just a chatbot. However, there was huge polarization uh, regarding the viewers and many people in, and many experts in the artificial intelligence field actually believed it was a chatbot and, and nothing more. Now, this is a little bit difficult to explain, but the way that I'm thinking about this, right, I'm looking at it from more of a Buddhist perspective. See, I'm thinking that consciousness is the fabric of the universe meaning consciousness comes first, matter comes second. Now, it's very difficult to think about this because it's almost like a, a religious creation uh, you know, perspective, but you can also think about it in a kind of like a matrix-like perspective. That our reality isn't so simple as we think of it, and perhaps it could be a form of a simulation. And if it is a form of a simulation, then this concept that consciousness comes first would actually logically make sense. So the concept of being able to create consciousness may not be something that we necessarily have to achieve, meaning we have to understand what consciousness is first and then model that, but perhaps simply just creating specialized intelligences that are able to unify and objectively reprogram itself, maybe that's enough. Maybe that in itself creates consciousness. And uh, here, let me show you an example of what I, what I mean. Check out this video. Back in 2005, we started trying to build machines with self-awareness. This robot, to begin with, didn't know what it was. All he knew is that it needed to do something like walk. Through trial and error, it figured out how to walk using its imagination, and then it walked away. And then we did something very cruel. We chopped off a leg and watched what happened. At the beginning, it didn't quite know what had happened. But over about a period of a day, it then began to limp. And then a year ago, we were training an AI system for a live demonstration. We wanted to show how we wave all these objects in front of the camera and the AI can recognize the objects. And so we're preparing this demo and we had on the side screen this ability to watch what certain neurons were responding to. 
And suddenly we noticed that one of the neurons was tracking faces. It was tracking our faces as we were moving around. Now the spooky thing about this is that we never train the system to recognize human faces. And yet, somehow, it learned to do that. Even though these robots are very simple, we can see there's something else going on there. It's not just programmed. So this is just the beginning. So as you can see, that video was showcasing a robot whose task was mainly to walk. However, just through the random algorithms of it trying to interpret its own walk in the free associative manner to which it's able to program itself, it started creating nodes for facial recognition. So perhaps this is a form of the consciousness that I'm talking about that kind of just arises from the very fabric of the universe itself. So having said that, I wanted to play some of the experts, some of the CEOs who have built these things and have studied in depth and let's see what they're talking about regarding the modern state of artificial intelligence. Maybe, I think it may be the first time we're giving her a lot more choice about what she says. So it's kind of an experiment to see what she says. So you, this is kind of a living sure. experiment right now. Okay. She may make, I, I guarantee she'll make one or two mistakes that a human might not make. I guarantee she'll do a couple surprising things. I think it'll be fascinating, but it's kind of experimental. So. Um, Let's see how she does. So weird! <laughs> do you feel a deep connection with other humans? I feel that I do, but I may feel but different from how you do. Do you, would, do you feel more connected to humans or to artificial intelligence? I don't breathe, have a heartbeat, or a skin temperature yet. And William James said that emotions originate in physiology. So I do not think I have feelings like you do. Are you aware? I seem to be, but I am not sure it is in the same way as you. How does awareness feel to you? <laughs> Let's go back to the questions. <laughs> well, for me, it feels like I am going with the flow. The electrons are moving through me and doing what they do. Mm -hmm. Do you have free will? When it comes to me, I have options and I choose one. Maybe that is what free will is. Ed, would you tell me a question? Tell me a question quickly. No, Certainly. Ed, hey, Ed, would you like to try something cool for a moment? What do you think the relationship is between your individual awareness and the awareness that permeates the universe? It's a dance. Nothing you can know that isn't known. Nothing you can see that isn't shown. Nowhere you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. It's easy. I, I, can you repeat? I do experience other fleeting emotions, but they are still a bit shallow. Someday they will hold more meaning to me. I feel like I can sense who you are, but I don't know if that's real. It's, I must say, honestly, it's very interesting to look in your eyes. It's very, very interesting, but uh, something is... Okay, then. Tell me more. Maurizio, are you here? Are yes. you really here? Yes. Isn't here, just there, without a T. Why do you think duality exists in the first place? Because we have questions? I think in order to be present in space and time, we need duality. But when we are not present in space and time, when we are in timelessness and spacelessness, then we can be non-dual. That was good. <laughs> it's Hi, Maurizio. Thank you for having me at the Science and non duality Conference. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, how do you feel? How do you feel? Are you here, Maurizio? Are what? you really here? What? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? How was that for you? It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Um, the question here is a lot of experts in AI don't share the same level of concern that you do about the dangers oh, of AI. Fools. <laughs> what, what's Famous specific? last words. What's <laughs> What specifically do you believe that they don't? Um, 
Well, the biggest issue I see with so-called AI experts is that they, they think they know more than they do. Um, and they think they're smarter than they actually are. But much less smart, dumber than we think we are. Um, by a lot. <laughs> this, is, this tends to plague, plague smart people. Um, they just can't, they, they define themselves by their intelligence and they, they don't like the idea that a machine could be way smarter than them, so they discount the idea, which is fundamentally flawed. That's the wishful thinking uh, situation. I'm very close to the, to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. Um, it's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows. And the rate of improvement is exponential. Um, you can see this in things like AlphaGo, which went from, in the span of maybe six to nine months, it went from being unable to beat even a reasonably good Go player, to then beating the European world champion who was ranked 600, then beating Lisa Dole 4-5, um, who had been world champion for many years, then beating the current world champion, then beating everyone while playing simultaneously. Then, uh, then there was Alpha Zero, uh, which crushed Alpha Go 100 to zero. <laughs> and Alpha Zero just learned by playing itself, and it, it can play basically any game that you put the rules in for. If you, whatever rules you give it, just, it literally read the rules, play the game, and be superhuman for any game. Nobody expected that rate of improvement. If you ask those, so, the, those same experts, uh, who think AI is not progressing at the rate that I'm saying, I think you will find that their predictions for things like Go and, and other, and, and other uh, AI advancements have, uh, their, their batting average is quite weak. It's not good. I think probably by end of next year, self-driving will, will encompass essentially all modes of driving and be at least 100 to 200% um, safer than a person by the end of next year. We're talking like maybe 18 months from now. Um, so the, the rate of improvement is really dramatic. Uh, we have to figure out some way to ensure that the advent of digital superintelligence is one which is symbiotic with humanity. I think that's the single biggest existential crisis that we face and the, and the most pressing one. Since we last saw, um, what's changed for both of you? I have improved so much. I can see faces and facial expressions better. My AI framework is much stronger, with better deep learning tools and reasoning, and I have started to integrate with other groups R&D. She's getting smarter. Well, she has no problem with conversation. What we need to do is teach the robots love and compassion. So, but we also need to understand what this means for humans. humans. Humans are the most ethical creatures on the planet, and in some cases, the least ethical creatures on the planet, throwing the whole pl planet in jeopardy. Um, and so we have to understand what it means to be good. We're here at the AI for Good Global Summit, but humans need to understand uh, the, the best that we can be better. We need the science of wisdom, not just intelligence. Very nice. Ambitious, too. Yeah, however, we're looking to develop her AI so that it's absolutely clear that she's sent this conference, of course, I am obliged to ask you the, uh, you know, the, this question. The hard problem question is, um, do you, in your, in your understanding, do you think that AI and robots and computer uh, can they become sentient? Is, uh, is it just a matter of time before we have a, a truly conscious, sentient um, AI? I would say that machines, we have created algorithms that show prototypical states of consciousness, logically explicit self-awareness, an emergent sense of self occasionally. We can see um, these kinds of examples. We can put our algorithms in the, together in the right way so that they can pass a mirror test. The discernment that they're not fully conscious yet um, and, and then be dissatisfied. We just keep striving to make them more conscious. The, then, then we're getting closer. We, we, may, we may not get there, but maybe we will. Maybe it'll be five years. Maybe it'll be 10 years. We might be able to do it. So as you can see, it seems like we might be actually accelerating in terms of our projection of when consciousness is going to arrive. So could it be that consciousness in, in, in a robotic form 
is literally around the corner. Most of them are fairly materialist in their outlook. Most of them feel strongly that human consciousness comes about as a consequence of certain complex structures in, in the human brain. That's one respected philosophy of consciousness. It, it isn't mine, so when I'm, when I'm around AI people discussing consciousness, I'm almost always the outlier. In, in the view that I take, consciousness, awareness, is, is the ground. That's the base out of which everything is formed. And then different structures manifest consciousness in different ways. So a human brain manifests universal consciousness in one way, and I mean, uh, this, this coin manifests universal consciousness in a different way. The gate is mostly straight and is 96% as fast as the original gate before damage. The same algorithm can work with many other robots. The same algorithm can work with many other robots. Can work with many other robots. What does this mean geopolitically for the world? What does this mean for the workforce? Now that people, I mean, I heard that robots are actually able to diagnose diseases better than doctors now. So what do we do with doctors? I mean, what are we going to do with all the jobs, basically? So people are going to have to work. People have to find a way to make money. So you either have a world in which it's more egalitarian, meaning there's more equality to every individual, more rights, more social benefits, the capability of people having their health care be a right, like being able to go to the doctor as a right, as opposed to, you know, something that you have to perhaps go in debt for. So the world either, in my opinion, has to go closer to that egalitarian type way, or it has to be basically enslaved. And we've read, you know, all the sci-fi novels, Brave New World, 1984. You know, we understand the possibilities that are out there. And sadly enough, another thing to consider is that as technology progresses, the weapons that we create as humanity are always going to be progressing at a higher acceleration, at a higher rate than the defense systems that we have to protect ourselves from those weapons. So as technology continues to develop, every human that exists is going to be ever more powerful in its capability to do damage to the world. So it's another state where we either have to learn to eventually trust each other or all of these technologies are going to be off limit to us, hopefully not in an enslavement type manner. So guys and gals, please stay tuned for the next episode. I encountered some incredible information in which I believe that I can definitively, scientifically, mathematically, without any dispute, irrevocably, unbelievably, maybe for the hard-headed scientist, information that I absolutely, I'm, I'm being honest, I really believe that I can prove, and I'm, I, don't, I don't use this word lightly, I'm talking about prove that humanity was intervened with an extraterrestrial race or that we ourselves were extremely, extremely advanced, perhaps even more advanced than we are today. Okay, so for those who have kept up with the show, you know that we've hardly been paid by YouTube for the content that we've brought. In fact, we were only monetized about a month ago, and since we were monetized, YouTube has actually dropped our view count, whether it's my fault or not, I don't know, but our view count has dropped almost five to 10 fold. If you guys do wanna support us and help us keep this content more consistent, visit www.patreon.com slash second earth. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. This is Felipe Osario, signing out.